it can be different. It's not like something, this is our monetary system as it is and you cannot change it now. It, it, it's a part, it's a set of rules and, you can, and if it are rules, you can have different rules as well. And that's what we want to show. Yourself, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I'm Jaap Fink. I work at the Social Trade Organization. We are a Dutch foundation based in the town of Utrecht. Already found, founded in 1970, started as an environmental agency. But right from the start, we were also yeah, wondering there are environmental problems, poverty problems. Uh, what, what are the deeper causes of these problems? And there are, of course, many uh, causes, but one of the most important ones in our view is how the monetary system is functioning, but especially is not functioning. And what we want to do, it's our big dream to change uh, the monetary system, but we, we re realize that is like a really big uh, aim and dream that we cannot do uh, just by ourselves. So what we do is uh, studying how can you have different uh, sorts of money, uh, what is working, what is not working, bringing that into practice, uh, studying our own projects, improving them, and so on and so on, till the point that we have like really showcases of uh, other sort of money, other sort of currencies, that other people easily can uh, copy and implement in their own uh, region or town. Okay. That, that's our main mission. And to realize that, um, we do like two different uh, approaches. One is to have the technology to make this happen, because without good uh, payment software you cannot start a uh, local currency. So we developed a Cyclos software that is payment software just like any other banking software, but it has uh, some innovations that make it possible to give other rules to money. And that's the core of our uh, work. So for example, we can uh, program or set in the uh, in a local currency, we want that this local money is circulating for at least half a year within the community. After that period, it can be converted back into euros, but for a half a year, it's only stimulating the local economy. Um, so, what we see is uh, this software, we use it in our own projects, but also a lot of other complementary currency uh, projects are using it. You can use it for all different kinds of setups uh, of uh, a currency. And it's also used by uh, yeah, for conventional uh, banking, especially in uh, Asian and African uh, countries. And that's also part of our strategy because in these countries, uh, the people, a lot of people are, are already used to the software. They don't use the innovations in it, but at the moment we have successful uh, showcases, for example here in the Netherlands, that are easy to copy. Then in those countries they only have to put on the innovations in the software and they can start a similar project uh, as we are doing right now in the Netherlands. Okay. Um, yeah, the projects we do ourselves, uh, also like two uh, main ones, um, but before we did a lot of different uh, projects, uh, we introduced the uh, LEDs uh, systems in the Netherlands and some other European countries. We learned what worked well with them and what didn't work out, so we improved uh, those models a lot, um, did a lot of projects in Latin America and when the financial crisis hit uh, Europe in 2008, 
we started also again projects in uh, Europe. For example, uh, we are partners with uh, the Sardex in Sardinia, uh, Bristol Pound and the Karama in uh, Santa Coloma near Barcelona. And since a couple of years, we also started again um, projects in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, we unite uh, different uh, local currencies. Um, you could say that our communities, there's one in Utrecht, one in the town of Alkmaar, a couple of other ones. And of course, each community, the members, they prefer to spend with each other. But um, they can spend with other members as well, from other communities. And this is especially important in the starting phase, because something what, what you experience with each complementary currency system is how do you get enough members in your system so that you can easily spend your uh, community currency but also easily earn it. Um, so if it's possible that a member can spend with other communities in the starting phase, it's easier for a company to spend its earned uh, local currency. Um, and in this network, uh, mostly it are small businesses, but there's also a community of uh, larger, sustainably focused companies, such as uh, a national bank, the Tridos Bank, uh, an energy company, and other large uh, organic uh, products, um, wall wholesale uh, companies. Um, now we also do this. We facilitate we facilita facilitate these uh, communities, but in Utrecht because it's our hometown, we implement it ourselves. Um, and the second innovation that we are testing in these uh, uh, these projects is a credit innovation where we say um, we give credit in for example in Utrecht euros to a company but uh, we're saying okay this credit is interest free for the company but the supplier of this company where he uh, spends the money of its credit they are paying a small fee for the risk of the credit so the risk that the credit won't be uh, repaid. And with the software, you can easily do this automatically. Uh, automatically. And in this way, uh, you see that in times that the economy is going down, uh, suppliers are in need of new clients and they are, are more willing to pay the fee for this credit, which is good news because especially in economic bad times, uh, banks are withdrawing their credits, so it's difficult for companies to get a credits. So our approach works uh, better when the economy is going down and a bit less when times are good for the uh, economy. How is the economy now? Uh, yeah, the at the moment uh, it's at its stop, but there are already your noting like, like the warning signals that things are going into change. Um, so we are hoping that we are uh, in time, that our network has been grown enough uh, to be ready for yeah, when it's going uh, down again and there will be more need for uh, credits and uh, companies yeah, to join uh, the system. Do you think it's going to happen soon? It's always hard to uh, predict. I mean, with, with economics, uh, everyone's saying something different, but yeah, it, it will happen within a couple of years, uh, I think maximum uh, two years. Um, and, and, and then we are ready. You because, will be ready? Yeah, because we now have a cre tested uh, the credit uh, approach uh, or procedures, the technology is doing fine. Uh, legally, we are in touch with the central bank, we have tested, okay, is this uh, allowed? Um, we, already, we already have a couple of hundreds of companies, so there is yeah, some group, some network where you already can spend. So yeah, we are ready for uh, a big road. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and um, one other interesting yeah project idea we have um, is 
how can we increase the impact of remittances? So the money that migrant workers are earning uh, abroad and sending back to their home country, to their families. And what you now often see is that this money is used by those families to buy goods from outside. So the money that's coming in is going out quickly from the local community. So we are wondering what if you would do this remittance money in a complementary currency as well. So the complementary the, the remittances are converted to a complementary currency received by the family. Also, it will be much cheaper to send it this way because with the software you can do it for free. Then it start, starts circulating for some time within the local uh, company, uh, lo local economy. And after some time, um, companies can convert it back to uh, the national currency, which uh, yeah, was made available actually by the migrants that bought the complementary currency. It is already launched, this? No, we, we are in touch with quite some uh, groups, organizations that uh, might be interested to introduce this. But this is, of course, harder than, let's say, the traditional local currency where you just have one community. You have to find a community, let's say, in the home region of migrants, and you have to find a group of uh, migrants abroad. Uh, yeah, and if possible, in the same region, because yeah, how are you going to find uh, all those migrants sending uh, money to this one specifically uh, region? But this could have an in enormous impact if it uh, get launched and we can we succeed to get it to uh, really a large uh, scale. Because the amounts of money going sent back home by uh, migrants is enormously. If you would be able to have just a small part of this in uh, local currency, the impact will be uh, yeah, large, really large. Okay. Yeah, yeah, several uh, points. Um, what you see, what happens a lot is that this a new initiative starts with a lot of enthusiasm, but they focus mainly on consumers and the shops and companies where consumers uh, spend. In our experience, this has never worked. The reason for this is that um, if you want uh, that shops that join such a system earn, well, quite some uh, local currency from the project, that it makes uh, it worth the effort for them. Uh, you need quite some consumer spending with them. So to be successful, you need a lot of consumers in the system. The other way around, to get a lot of consumers in, uh, you need to offer them a lot of spending opportunities. So there should be a lot of shops, uh, pubs, uh, other companies in the system and it, it, it's really hard to uh, realize that at the start. So what we rec recommend is to start the other way around. Start with focusing on uh, business to business uh, as yeah, those kind of businesses. And of course, there are also businesses that are focused on other businesses and also on consumers. That, that's no problem at all. But once you have this base of business to businesses, then if uh, shops uh, at some moment you say, okay, now we're ready for that, they will join. They can easily spend any earnings they have with those uh, companies. Then it's easier also to have more shops in. And then you start also to get on full scale to get consumers in. It is possible uh, to start to also have at the start consumers in, but then you should be very carefully in your communication about the expectations for those consumers. So then your message should be something like, great that you join, it helps really, it really helps the system, but don't expect at the start that you have a lot of 
possibilities where you can spend uh, the local currency. And for the shops that join, it's the same message. Then you say, okay, if you join a shop at this stage, again, it's great. There are some consumers in that might be spent with you, but don't expect too much of it at this phase. We need you as a front runner, but uh, be patient. And then after one or two years, as the system has become much larger, also everything's working uh, smoothly, then you can launch a large campaign to get uh, consumers in, shops in, but then you have all the suppliers of the shops already in your system. So that, that's one main lesson. Where do you focus on? The other one is, uh, let's say, the, um, the kind of model you're choosing. So what is the backing of your uh, local currency? Um, there, are, there are quite some options. We choose for the option that uh, at some moment it is possible for companies only to buy euros for their uh, local currency. So the local currency comes into circulation in this model either by credit or by people or company buying with euros uh, the local currency. Um, but at some moment, and in, the soft, in our software you can set the exact moment for this, uh, companies have the right, they don't have to, but they have the right to buy euros with their local currency. And in this way you solve uh, two problems. One problem and that you see in most systems is that your best members, that are the members that have the best offer and in this way earn the most uh, local currency in your network, uh, that they cannot spend their local currency. So what happens? They leave the system or they stop accept accepting the local currency. If they have the option to uh, buy euros for the local currency, they stay within the system. And the second problem you solve is that you make it much easier for companies to join. When they just hear about the system, your initiative, they can have maybe a little fear, how is it working? And what if I earn a lot of this local currency, but I cannot spend it? Then you can say, well, if you cannot spend it, there's always this emergency exit, so to say, you can always buy euros for it. Um, so yeah, that's about the modeling. Um, the third one is, yeah, so, so your technology. I mean, we hear and we experience that quite some initiatives uh, yeah, start building their own software or spending a lot of money on that. Um, I'm not saying they should use our cycle software like hundreds of other organizations do. There are other good options as well, but don't go reinvent the wheel yourself in, in this uh, Aspect. There is good technology available, in uh, most cases for free, so yeah, just use it, <laughs> it saves you a lot of trouble. Um, and the last one is the, the let's say the group, your, your, your team, where you start your initiative with. Be sure that the local business community is involved, because otherwise you will stick uh, to, let's say, sort of social currency which is no problem at all, but then that should be your objective of, the, of your currency to that people meet each other in the neighborhood, um, those kind of things. But if you want to have an economic impact with your uh, currency, the local business community should be involved uh, from the start. And it would be of course great if you have different skills in your team available, like someone good with technology, uh, marketing, um, someone who can just very good go to companies uh, or has a company himself even better uh, so that you have a mixed team of uh, skills and um, yeah then patience and preferably also some resources so because you need at least in our experience a year of preparation and one or two years before you really have skill for a successful uh, project Okay, right. And um, now, if you will have to convince someone who 
doesn't understand why uh, local currency is interesting or what can be good about uh, getting involved in this kind of project or why it should be joined the yeah. uh, network sh shortly. What would you say to this person? You, you should first thing try to find out what is his or her interest. Um, so we get companies in our network in Utrecht. It could be because they like uh, to support local companies because they're locally focused with their own company. It could be for, for they want to support sustainable companies. It could be that they want to have extra clients, new clients or more turnover. It could be uh, they want to have uh, interest-free credit. Um, it could be, but it's a small group, that they don't like the way the banks are doing our financial system at the moment. And it's your job, if you start such a system, to find out what works best with each uh, person. And often, of course, it's a mix of these uh, yeah, yeah. motivations. And for you, what is your motivation about getting involved? Yeah, my motivation, that's like the dream I started this interview with, that, you, that we really show it can be different. It's not like something, this is our monetary system as it is, and you cannot change it now. It, it, it's a part, it's a set of rules, and, we can, and if it's our rules, you can have different rules as well. And that's what we want to show. What is the biggest threat um, for local currency for you for the next years? Or um, okay, for each system, it's uh, to get scale on time. So your, your members from the start, they are willing to accept that for one or two years, maybe three years, um, there isn't that much in for them yet in terms of economic impact. So you always should have a strategy, how can I do good communication with them and reach a scale of, let's say, 500 companies in your uh, network. Um, the other one is uh, if, let's say, larger companies or the banks, if they would see such systems as a threat, as has happened in the past, it's much difficult, more difficult this day than to, to just uh, put down these kind of systems in legal terms, because now with internet, it's it's easier to organize and also to have a setup that, that meets all legal requirements. But that, that, that could be a, a risk. Um, yeah, and the other one is if the economy would grow forever in a sustainable way, but that's not happening. So uh, actually that is the way, the reason why more and more people will turn to these kind of uh, initiatives. Okay. Arriving at the end, um, do you have a free message that you want to say? Like, or um, you to add? Yeah, for everyone starting or interested in these kind of things, um, like I said, online there's a lot of information available, not only from us, but also from other organizations, initiatives. Uh, we are working on a new book in English, especially uh, focused on regions that want to use uh, this kind of, let's call it circular uh, currencies as a tool to develop their region, um, which could inspire them to uh, really start this uh, kind of approaches on a large scale. Because that's what is needed. There are a lot of people uh, working in this field, not all really small initiatives with some uh, examples like Sardex, uh, some uh, exceptions like Sardex, but what we need is some yeah, more show showcases. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.